Hey, have you ever wanted to be uh, better, like um, at something like maybe be in better shape, or you wanted to have better grades, okay, or maybe you just wanted to have like you know a better um, relationship with your brother or sister. <laughs> Or, or maybe you just wanted to be better at getting up in the morning, like not snoozing 18 times and being late to school. How many of you were late on the day you got to go two hours late? Anybody still having trouble? <laughs> like, I'm, still, I'm still late to school. I get two extra hours, okay? Um, so maybe you just wanted to be better at something like that. Um, there's a lot of times I'll be laying in bed at night, like, uh, and, and I can't go to sleep. I don't know if you're one of those people that just fall right asleep. I am jealous of you, but I'll be laying in bed and I can't go to sleep. And I'll just be thinking about things and I'll think, you know what? Tomorrow, I have all this energy and stuff like Tomorrow, I am going to work out because it's no reason not to. I'm just going to do it, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to be more healthy and I'm going to eat better too. You know, I'm going to try the carrots for the cookies and, and I'm going to eat better. And then I'm like, and, and I'm for sure going to do this. I'm going to get up when my alarm goes off because I'm tired of laying there for an extra hour, waking up every eight minutes while I hit that stupid <laughs> snooze button. And, and so I'm thinking, I'm going to do all this stuff, right? Then I go to sleep. And the alarm goes off, and I'm like, uh, I just want to lay here and eat cookies <laughs> all day long. And, and I just, some, there's a problem in that I have like this image, right, uh, in my head of what I want it to look like and do and all that. But my habits are different. They don't get me to that. I mean, I work out like once every four weeks, okay? <laughs> and, and that's not going to get me to where I'd like to be. So my habits are not always going to, are not lining up necessarily with what I want. Um, last week, it feels like a month ago, but last week, um, the something about being stuck in my house made that week seem like a really long. But um, last week we talked about, we used, looked at this um, idea, this little thought, and it's not in the Bible, so if you don't like it, you can be like, that's stupid, I don't like it, and that's okay. But uh, it's kind of interesting to think about, and I think it's generally true, and it says, it's this, it's a friend of mine says this, and it says, you make your habits, and your habits make you. If you were here a couple weeks, you remember that. You make your habits, and your habits make you. Let's talk about that bottom part there, your habits make you. Um, if you know someone that has really good grades... They have habits that get them there. Now, that was me as a, as a teenager. I, um, I was not as smart as some of my friends. Uh, some of them could just memorize stuff just by reading it once, okay? Some of them were way better at English and other things like that. But what I had was habits and I, and it, that would help me. And, you know, I would... I had this one guy, he said, how come you always make an A on everything? And he was like, I can't ever make an A on anything. He's like, how do you always do that? And I was like, well, I make a flash card for, make flashcards for every test. If I don't understand something, I go to tutorials. Sometimes I go to tutorials every single day. And I pray before every test. And I, and I just went through all these things I did. And I got done. And he goes, I did, don't do any of those things. <laughs> and uh, so it's like, my habits were leading me to one thing. If you, if you know someone that's in really good shape, like that person that can like run a mile and then they get done and they're like not even losing their breath, you're still on your first lap and you're like about to die, you know, that, you know, that person, there's a reason that they can do that is because of habits that they have. Um, I know someone that from the time they were 16 to the time they were 20, they had eight car wrecks. And you could go, now that's bad luck. I call that bad driving, okay? <laughs> if your habit is to back up without looking, you, you have bad habits in driving. If you like to change lanes without looking or drive way over the speed of time, you have bad habits in driving. Uh, I have a family member that has backed into his garage at least 10 times because he always starts to back up without looking and the door's down and his door is always poked out, okay? So you, you, if you have a bad habit, it, it goes somewhere. Your habits kind of make who you are. But the cool thing about this idea, if it's true, is that you make your habits so therefore, and those make you, you have the ability to change some stuff. So if you're looking at yourself, it's like, I, I want to be different in this. I want to be better at this. You have the ability to change it. And that, that could be kind of helpful, you know, if um, you want to have more money or you want to be in better shape or make better grades or get up on time and stop being late or um, have more friends, okay? There's habits that you can change and it will make you different, so that's kind of helpful maybe to think about, but what if we take it a step further and say, what about this? What if there were some habits that God wanted us to have? And if we took those habits and put them in our life, wouldn't that make a big difference? I mean, we're not talking about trading a cookie for a carrot now, okay? We're talking about taking something that God says and changing our lives. And if we change that habit, that thing that he wants to do, it makes our life different. In fact, I was looking through the Bible to see what it says about people who obey his commands and take what he said and make it their habit. Here's some things it says about those people. Luke 
11.28 says that they're blessed. That means good things are coming to them. Um, John 15.10 says they're full of love and full of joy. You may want to be full of love and full of joy. I like both of those. They're really good, okay? Um, here's a really great one. Deuteronomy 28.8 says the people that are doing his commands, making his commands a habit, it says they, are, they have success in everything they do. Success in everything they do. That sounds pretty good to me. And I'll give you one more here. It says Proverbs 3.16 says they have long life and riches. Okay, so and on and on we could go through the Bible. People that take God's word, God's commands, and make them their habits, make them part of their life, it changes their life. It changes you. Now, if you're a Christian, um, what I'm about to say is going to apply. If you're not a Christian, you, can, you don't have to do it. But if you're a Christian, think about this. You say he's Lord. You say God is, is your Lord and he, you're serving him. So what he says should shape your habits, right? I mean, if, if his commands should shape our habits, but there's another way that goes. Our habits shape our relationship with him, don't they? I mean, the things we do, whether we're, we're worshiping him or we have a habit of prayer or we have a habit of doing things he said either gets us closer to him or away from him. Your habits are making you closer to God or further away from God, right? Your habits are making you closer to his plan for your life or further away from his plan for your life. Your habits are making you more into his joy, his peace, his success, or further away from that. So maybe we need to look at this. Now, last week, if you were here, um, we talked about how that we sh- the Bible says that we should daily encourage each other, that Christians should encourage each other like in our faith that we should be talking to anybody. And some of you did that. I know that some of you, at least you did it for a day or two, okay? Uh, I talked to someone and they said, I got three messages yesterday encouraging me. And some of you are like, I didn't get any messages. And, and you probably didn't send any either, did you? Okay, so, but, um, you know, we need to encu- talk about encouraging. We tried that and maybe some of you were successful, some of you weren't. We're gonna look at something else today that is really, really big and we're just gonna jump right in. So if you brought your Bibles, we're in First Thessalonians 5 and it's kind of hard to find. I should have given you some more time. In the New Testament, if you find a book that starts with a T, it's going to be right next to it because all the New Testament books that start with a T are right next to each other. It's kind of handy, little trick, okay? So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to jump right in right here, and we're going to look at the second half of the verse first. It says this, always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Now, I know you didn't go to school very much this week, but how often are we supposed to try to be kind Always, okay, some of you are are not doing so well in this quiz, all right? We are always to try to be kind to each other. Always try to be kind to each other. Now, Jesus, when he talked about what he wanted us to do, over and over he said that we're to love each other. And kindness is a way that we love each other. Because love isn't a feeling. He wasn't saying, feel good towards everybody, okay? There is a feeling love, but that's not what Jesus was talking about. There's a do that he wanted us, there's a thing he wanted us to do, and this is one of them, to be kind kind. Now, um, I really like the first half of this verse because it, it, it's like he knew. Like, you know, somebody just, somebody just knows like what you were thinking and maybe you weren't thinking this. But anyways, he says, make sure, this is the first half of the verse, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other. Now, here's why I think he said that because some people, God says, be kind and you go, okay, but not to them. Okay, you don't know what they did, okay? You know, it's like, it's, you, have you met my sister God? Okay, <laughs> I know you created her and everything, but have you been paying attention, you know? Have you met this person? And, and so you're kind of like, but he says, oh, by the way, I know that there's people that do you wrong. And those are, I mean, everybody is kind. All the guys are kind to the girl that's cute that they hope will talk to them, okay? All the guys are kind, that's easy, okay? Girls, you're, you're kind to that guy who's, you know, you know, good looking and you hope will ask you for his number. You're kind to him, it's easy, okay? But the being kind to that person that's a jerk or that's done wrong to you or to your teacher that, you know, never gets you or your parents when they don't ever, whatever. And, and so being kind to someone you're mad at, that's a little different. And so uh, we, he, he takes it there and he says it's maybe not as easy as what you're hoping for. But, um, you know, this is really interesting because kindness is a key to opening some good things in your life. Listen, God wants to bless you. The Bible says that those who love others are full of joy. Full of joy. Are you full of joy? I'm talking happy now, okay? Full of joy, all right? You're just like, ah, I can't take any more joy. Give it to somebody else, okay? So full of joy, you're just completely full. And who is that way? People that love each other. And so when we do this, when we're kind, it's the, the key to opening up God's joy and blessings in our life. So we've got to be kind. When we're kind to others, it opens the door for others to be kind back to us. So we've got to learn how to do this. So what I want to help you do is we want to make it a habit. 
because that's what we're talking about. And, and it's easy to kind of hear. We've talked about kindness tons in here. We've talked about love a ton in here. But then we hear it and we walk out the door and some of you are mean to your parents on the way to the car, okay? And so we need to learn how to be kind and I want to teach you how to make it a habit. And I'm going to make it as easy as I can. And it's going to be something that you can do for the people you eat lunch with, for your parents, for your brother and sister, for your teachers, your coach, uh, for the lady at the Walmart counter. I don't care who it is. You can do this stuff for them and certainly for each other in this room and we can learn to do this and we learn to be kind so this is what I want you to do I'm going to make it real easy for a member okay you come up and you're walking up to somebody and you're going to be kind and this is what you're going to do you're going to kick them so once you practice just turn to your neighbor and give them a good kick okay that's gentle gentle okay give them a kick okay <laughs> now now, I don't actually mean that kind of a kick. What we're going to do is we're going to take this kick without a K, okay, kick. And we're going to give you guys a little, um, little thing to help you remember it, okay? Three words that are going to help you live out kindness and make it a habit. This is something that this week we are going to try as hard as we can to make a habit, okay? So each of these letters are going to stand for something that's going to be easy for you to remember. All right, so here's the first thing that you're going to do, okay? The first thing we're going to do is the K is this, kiss. All right, no, no, don't turn to your neighbor or nothing right now, okay? <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, dude, it's a dude, okay. Um, all right, now, this one needs a little explanation. So before you get too excited, let's look at the Bible verse first, okay? I'm not making any of these things up. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 12. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Okay, some of you are excited right now. You've never been this excited in church before. Okay, so now, first of all, I want to point out a couple of things. Number one, the word holy, okay? So some of you are thinking unholy things right now. Number two, um, you should not, but under any circumstances, be going around kissing people for this, okay? This is not what we're talking about. In fact, if you greet my wife with a holy kiss, I'm going to greet you with a holy fist, all right? So just so you know, um, there's a couple holy things I got going here. So, um, we're not talking about kissing. In fact, I just want to be really clear. I'm not talking about going around kissing everybody. But <laughs> the reason we use it is it is in the Bible. In fact, this Paul, the guy who wrote this, he wrote it to five, five different times in five different letters. He wrote to different Christians and wrote the same thing that we're to greet one another with a holy kiss. What is he talking about? Now, you have to understand back in their times, okay, it was very, very normal for two people that walked into the room and greeted each other to greet with a kiss. Two guys would walk up and give each other a kiss, and there's nothing weird about it. Okay? There's nothing sexual or like relational like that about what they're talking about. Now, our culture, you go up to a guy and you do that, you're going to get punched in the face, okay? Um, and that should probably happen because it's kind of weird in our culture. And so that's not what we're talking about. Um, it, it's, it's quite a bit different. But what it, the reason why we need to know about this and why it's important is because he's, he's giving us, it's, it's, there's the spirit of it. There's the idea behind what he is telling them to do, and that is to, um, to love each other, to greet one e another in a different way. Um, in fact, there's some like, you know, the Bible's translated in different ways, and there's some paraphrases that try to, um, are you all cold? Tracy, why don't you turn it up a degree? I see people shivering out here, okay? Just, just wondering, so it'll turn off, um, and, and I think it, the air turned on. So now, um, okay, so some of the translations have tried to, to reword this in a way that's more normal for our society. Here, uh, the Message Bible, for example, um, says this, greet one another with a holy embrace, like a hug, you know? And so that maybe seemed a little bit more like what we would do. You know, we would walk up and give someone a hug or one translation I think says a holy handshake. But, uh, you know, like, you know, because even, okay, here's the truth. Even a hug, okay, some of you creepy guys are thinking about all the hug girls are going to get the hug now. You're going to be like walking down the hall finding the cheerleaders like, my youth pastor told me to hug everybody. And you're going and hugging people and the girls are like, oh, he stinks, okay? And <laughs> and you're just like, you're, you're you're, you've got this wrong because you're, you're a weirdo and all that. So that's, that's not what we're talking about. You can even take that wrong, okay? Um, so, in fact, I really like the way the New Living Translation kind of paraphrases this. They, 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 they change it to say this, and just to kind of give us an idea of what it means, and that is greet one another, greet each other with Christian love. It, it, they're trying to say this. Look, there's like a, a way that we greet each other that is special, that is different than everybody else. That we're, we, like, we like love people. 
And we're, we're just, there's this an expression of it, not necessarily a kiss, but, or it may be a hug, it may be a high five, it may be something like that, but there's an excitement and a joy, a warmness that we show to people when we greet them. And, you know, I remember when I was in youth, I graduated and went to college, and, um, and my family moved away from the church that we were at, and um, so I you know, didn't go to my, that church for a long time, but a few months later, I had the opportunity to visit on a Wednesday night, and I was kind of excited because I hadn't seen any of my friends that were there in a long time, and I walked in the room, and I remember that I got this attack of hugs and high fives and smiles and just so glad to see you and kind words, and it was like really cool. <laughs> I was like, so many people gave me a hug, and I felt so welcome and all that. And it's kind of interesting. That was like 10 years ago. And I remember something that happened almost 10 years ago, just the way people greeted me. Now, it's probably not going to be the case that people are remembering the way that you greet them in 10 years, okay? Uh, if they do, you probably did something wrong. But um, <laughs> you, know, you walked up and gave them a kiss, probably they'd be like, oh, that weirdo 10 years ago, okay? But that's not what we're talking about. The, they probably aren't going to remember it. But here, here's the thing. We should be greeting people in a way that is, it's different and it makes them feel, I just, I remember the way I felt and we can do that for people. So maybe we'll give it, make this a little more practical on the, um, on the, on the kiss part of it, okay? Um, and, and that it may not be, it's not, okay, let's, let's remove the may not. It will not be a kiss, okay? But it may be a hug for certain people, okay? Again, let's, let's put it this way. It is not for you. It is for them, okay? So if you're like, I'm going to hug her because she's hot. and uh, No, it's not for you. If it's creeping her out, you're doing it wrong, okay? So um, if it's a hug, though, if it's a friend, especially a guy, guys, hug other guys. There's nothing wrong with that, especially in this youth group. I mean, you probably want to go hug your coach. You'd be like, Get, run a lap, all right? But uh, you know, there's certain people, okay? But it may be that. I'll tell you what it might be. It might be um, just a really kind word, you know? Somebody comes to the room and say, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Or it's so good to see you. Or, you know, I'm so happy that um, you got to come. And, and you say something really kind. It could be as simple as a smile and a hi. I, I remember one time I was having a really, really, really bad day. We all have those sometimes. And I walked into a room and one of my friends was in there. And my friend walks up to me with like the biggest smile and just says, hey. And I just remember the way all that gloom that I had just kind of went oh, away. All from a smile and a hey. And just because they greeted me, with love. Now, if they greeted me with a kiss, it had been weird, but that's the, they greeted me with the idea of this. Y'all get the idea behind this? Now, the reason I, I like this word is because when, when you're walking up with someone, I want you to think kick, okay? Now, and you're like, oh, no, kick. And then the first word that's going to come to your mind is kiss, and you're going to go, <laughs> and you're going to smile, and then you've already got the right face to greet somebody. So you're smiling because you're thinking kiss, and they have no idea why you're smiling, but you're happy, and you're making them happy. So we got that down. Now, I just want to say this. If some of you are still sitting there daydreaming about kissing people, you just need to change the word in your head, and you're going to take these letters, and you're going to spread them out, okay? And you're going to add some more letters, and it's going to be kindness, okay? Um, you just need to think kindness if you can't handle kiss, okay? So um, there's, there's that option for some of you if you can't handle it. Now, um, the next two letters, this, this first word is, is not something we're really doing. It's really to get us the idea behind it, to get our emotions right. We're understanding that it's a, it's a love, a Christian love kind of thing. These next are really, really practical things we're going to do. And uh, so let's, let's do this. Okay, the next one is interest. Now, I wanted to write, for some of you that are taking notes or that are really smart, I was going to write inquire, um, and I was talking about it with Tracy, and I was like, I don't think a lot of them are going to know what inquire means. And she was like, that's good. They need to learn new words. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's true. Because inquire kind of gets more to the meat of what we're talking about, and that we want to, uh, or it's more direct. And that we're, the idea behind this one is that we're going to ask people, the practical way, ask people about themselves, ask people about how they are, be interested in them. Be interested in the person that you just walked up to. So someone comes up and you greet them, hey, your smile, your hug, whatever it is, whatever is appropriate for that relationship that is a warm and kind greeting. And you might say something about, hey, how was your test? Or, hey, how did that go last night? Or, you know, and, and you show them that you have, this is what happens when you ask somebody something about them. It shows I'm interested in you. I'm interested in what you have. And everybody likes that. Everybody likes somebody that cares about them, remembered what they said. Everybody likes that. And it, it brightens your day. It makes you feel better. And it, it, it makes better relationships. And it's actually biblical. I'm not just making this stuff up, okay? And just, if you think I am. Okay, it says this. Each of you should not only look to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. 
We should look to others' interests. Now, this is even deeper, okay? This is talking about you're seeing that they have this interest and you're going and you're, you're maybe helping them with that and, and pursuing that. But just even taking a small step and showing interest by asking them about stuff that they're doing and showing interest in their life, not just walking up and say, some of us, some of you, this will make, you'll have more friends if you can learn to do this. Because you just walk up and you go, hey, let me tell you what I did, about me, 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 me. And you never take the time to say, hey, how are you. And it, by the way, this is not like a little t- check off list. We come up and say, hey, hug, hug, how are you? Okay, and I move on. I did my thing. Okay, because when we all say, how are you, and we don't even like answer, like, you know, someone says, hey, how are you? Oh, hey, how are you? Hi. And, and then that's it. Nobody ever answers. Like, why did I even ask? Okay, and you don't even want to answer half the time, right? You say, hey, how are you? Say, oh, I'm having a bad Oh, I got to go. Okay, uh, you, don't, you didn't want to hear the how are you, right? You just, you just say it. This is, this is more genuine. We're actually. Maybe that's why the word interest is good. We're actually interested in what they're saying. So you, you come up, you're greeting them. Maybe you ask them a question about themselves. You don't have to do all of them, but and here's the, the second one here. Um, is that we give them a compliment, a compliment. <laughs> now that, that's so easy. In fact, and some of you are really, really good at this, but so what, nothing makes people feel better than to, say, to hear someone say something kind and a compliment to them. Say, what, if you want to make my wife happy, tell her how much you like her boots, okay? And she'll just, you're, you're her best friend, okay? Because she's got new boots and she loves them. And you tell her, and some of the girls are like, ooh, those are nice boots, okay? But uh, if, you, if you tell her that she's going to love, she's going to like you, okay? Now here's the, here's the idea, but people love it when you, you notice something about them. You, you compliment something about them. And, and, and listen, it's biblical to encourage each other. And complimenting is a way to encourage each other in in, in different ways. And so we need to do it. Maybe you need to um, uh, tell some people on the worship team, hey, I really enjoyed the way you led worship. You did a great job. And just encourage them, compliment them, let them know. Tell your mom, dinner was good. You know, your mom doesn't have to fix you dinner. She can say, make your own ramen noodles. I'm busy, okay? But if she makes you dinner, you got to say thank you. You're like, well, thank you. I thought we were complimenting you. Listen, saying thank you to somebody is in a way complimenting them. It's saying that you recognize that they did something for you. And it's, it's, it's a way of showing appreciation. It's a way of complimenting them. It's something we should do. So we're going to have the idea of what a kiss means in their culture and that we're greeting each other warmly. And then maybe we, you don't have to go in order. You may walk up and compliment them you, and may ask them a question later. But the idea is that in our conversation with someone, we're greeting them warmly, we're asking them, we're interested in them, and we're, we're building them up and encouraging them. Now, um, I was thinking, we're going to do this for everyone, by the way, Okay. Whenever you walk up to someone, you're thinking, kick, okay? (laughs) You're thinking, I'm going to kick, and you're going to go down. So I was thinking about this yesterday. I've been doing this for a long time, for as long as I've been um, in a relationship with my wife, I've been doing this, okay? She comes home to the house, and I get up, and she can tell you this is true. I come to the door and meet her at the door. Sometimes I hear the garage door coming up, so I come and I wait at the door. And when she comes in, I I greet her, and I, you know, the smile. I probably take this word a little literally, and, uh, you know, uh, it's okay because it's my wife, okay? And and so, and then... I ask her how her day was. I always tell her that she looks good, okay? I compliment her, and, and this happens all the time. Every time I meet her, every time I greet her, it happens in the morning, before I leave, all these things, and I, it's a regular habit. And it's funny, because last night, I was thinking about all this and putting all this together, and um, we, she walked in the room, and I just went to do my normal thing, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going right down the list. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't even on purpose. But this, this is a way that we, we really... Um, can change our relationships. And listen, I believe it will it'll open up a door for something new for you, that your life will be different because you, you change a habit and make this a habit. Now, I know, I know there are people that you just want to literally kick, okay? Not this kick, like kick, okay? But and if in those relationships even, you can come up and say, you know what? I'm going to do this to your brother and sister, okay? To, to your parents or to somebody. It would change a lot. So this is what I'm going to challenge you to do. I'm going to encourage you to do, starting in just a minute, because we are almost done. And when we are done, to begin this practice. Now, I, I do not want to see any kissing. I think I've been very clear <laughs> that that is not what that means, okay? You can kiss your mom and dad, okay? But other than that, uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about hugs or high fives or, you know, smiles and kind words, okay? And then... We're asking each other, but we're interested in each other, we're complimenting each other, and I, I can just see you guys making the joke out of this for a while, but listen, really though, once you get out of this place and you start to go home, 
that we want to try, I want you to just try to make a habit of it for one week. Now, I think, see, the thing about habits, once they become a habit, they kind of stick with you. And I, and I, I realize this has been a habit of mine for a long, long time, and it's helped a lot, a lot of relationships of mine be very, very good. And, and, and I think it's opened the door for God to bless me in many places. And so I want you to make a habit of it for one week. Every conversation you have, you're going to try to do this. And not that you're going to do all three. I asked them a question. I told them a compliment. But you're going to greet them warmly, and you're going to try to be interested in them. Tell them something good about themselves, and you will see. Now, some of you are so good at this. I was watching Joni before church because I knew I was going to preach this. And she's walking around. She's giving hugs and asking people about themselves and telling them they look pretty. And I was like, man, she's got this down, okay? And, uh, and some of you also do. And so let's just think about one more thing before we go. I want you to think about some specific places this is going to happen. Okay, because you're going to get a chance right when service is over. Some of you, your parents dropped you off, and they're going to come pick you up. Now, some of you, when you get in that car, you usually, you, I mean, it starts. I mean, the fighting starts, or you put your headphones in and don't listen, or whatever. I've heard some of you talking on the phone after we talked about love with your parents, saying the most hateful things on the phone, okay? So the second this is over, you go out to that car, and you sit down, to, and you're next to your mom or your dad. This is what you're thinking, I'm going to greet them warmly. Your mom, some of you, if you were sitting in your house and your mom came home and you got up and said, and you gave your mom a hug and said, I'm so glad you're home, she would go, what'd you do? <laughs> what happened? Because that never happens. Some of you, your dog greets your parents more than you do, okay? Your dog is happier to see them. You're like, the dog probably is happier to see them, okay? I don't care if you're not happy to see them and they're not happy to see you. Listen, this will, this will change your relationship for better with your parents. And it's something for you to try for a week. Maybe you get up in the morning and you do this when you see them in the morning or when they come home from work or you come home from school. Some of you are going to go out to the car and do this. You're going to greet your parents warmly. You're going to show interest in them. And you're going to give them a compliment. And I'll tell you what, if they picked you up tonight, this is the compliment. Thank you for driving me and picking me up from church. Because you never know, your parent might be thinking, I am so sick of driving them over there, and they're never appreciative of it. And this is the last week. And you sit down in the car and say, just thank you so much. And they go, I guess I'll keep doing it. You just don't know. Maybe your parents are thinking, I don't see why they keep going because it doesn't make any difference in their life. And then you come and you start doing this and they go, I see a difference in my kid's life. Maybe I need some of that. Some of your parents need to get Jesus. You can show it to them right here. This can make all kinds of world of difference in your family. Some of you have a teacher. Let's talk about your classroom. You got that teacher that just, ooh, they always putting you in detention or whatever it is. Imagine, now you're going to hate this. Imagine you walk in the room with a smile and you look at that teacher and say, good morning, Mr. whatever his name is. Good morning, Mr. Um, <laughs> and then you kiss him, right? No. No, it's the, it's the smile one for your teacher, okay? You say, good morning, Mr. How are you? And he tells you, and then you sit down. And then when you're leaving his class or her class, you, you walk, as you're walking by the desk, you tell him something you liked about the class. You say, hey, I really liked when you said that. Or I really understood it for the first time when you said that. And you give him a compliment on their teaching. I want to tell you something. You do that on a regular basis, and that teacher will start to think different about you. And the next time he's looking at your paper going, ah, oh, you're one point off. You know, he is so kind. He's always kicking me, okay, <laughs> that kind of kick, okay, he's always do compliment, he's, uh, and, and they just ignore that one little thing, I tell you, I've had that happen to me so many times, and it's because I was kind to teachers, and to what, you can look at any relationship in your life, some of you, you, you would change your relationship with, and you're like, well, they don't do it back, that doesn't matter, you're letting God take care of the getting things back, he's gonna bless you, all you have to do is do it, so I hope that you will, just remember kick, why don't you say the first one for me, ready, yes. kiss, yes. interest, compliment. It's so easy to do and so easy to remember, and I hope that you'll do it. Let's pray together. Father God, I just pray for every young person here that we will go out and we will remember to be kind to others, and I ask that you would just bless their lives through it, and that we'll never be the same. Help us to make it a habit. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Why don't you hang out, and we'll see you later.